Do you want to know how you can start an IT career in 2019? Stay tuned. Yo, what's going on YouTube? This is Zach with IT Career Questions. And before we begin today's video, if you guys are looking to get into IT and you're looking for the perfect training resource so you can get certified, make sure you guys check out Pluralsight. You can get a free trial by clicking on the link in the description below. But getting into today's video, if you guys are looking to get into IT and maybe you have no experience, no degrees, no certifications, maybe you have a degree, maybe you have a certification, we're gonna talk about how you can get your foot in the door. So the information that I need to start off with in this video is letting you guys know that 98% of the time when you are just getting your foot in the door in an IT role, it's going to be entry level. Meaning whether you have a degree, have certifications or both, or you don't have any experience, or you have none of it, you're going to be starting off at an entry level role. Now, this should not be discouraging to you at all. An entry level role is really going to build the foundations of the skills that you need to get yourself further into this career. You get everything thrown at you in an entry level role. And by working in this type of role, you can really help determine where it is that you'd like to be further down your career. Now, you don't have to stay in these entry level roles for a long period of time, provided that you understand how an IT enterprise works, you're showing initiative to always trying to learn more, and your communication skills are top notch. You can really stay in these roles for anywhere from six months to two years, and that's a sufficient amount of time that'll help you build that experience that employers are really looking for. Now, the 2% of people who get into IT and they land something past an entry level role really relies on dumb luck, having amazing connections with other people who are working in the field that help place them in that role, or because you have soft skills that blow people away. There's nothing wrong with an entry level position, provided that you understand that this is the stepping stone to a long and lucrative career. So again, just to sum all this up, it really doesn't matter how many degrees you have, how many certifications you have, experience, you could have none of it, you can have a couple of those things combined. You're gonna find that a majority of the time, you're only being called for entry level roles because that's what employers are first expecting of these people who are looking to just get their foot into the door. Now I know, before you even leave a comment, you're gonna say, but the job descriptions have all of these things that you need to know, and they require three to five years of experience for an entry level role. Well guys, let me just tell you, a job description that you find online is simply a wish list from this employer. They wish that they could bring in somebody who meets all of these requirements. But frankly, 99% of the time, they're never going to find somebody who meets every single job description requirement that they posted. So if you meet some of those job requirements, apply for the job. Really, the most important advice that I can give you is apply for everything. It doesn't matter that you don't meet all of their job description requirements. It doesn't matter that you don't have two to five years of experience working in the field. They're looking for people who meet some of their requirements and then they're gonna look at those resumes and put a lot of weight into those right off the bat to see if you have some of those skills or past experiences in any type of field that would relate to the job that you are applying for. Going off of this a little bit further is when you are applying for all of these different jobs because you should be applying for everything, by the way, like I said, you should be tailoring your resume to each specific job that you apply for. Meaning you're going through that job description, you're looking at the skills that they have required there, and you're really going back to your resume and highlighting the skills that you do have that match what they're looking for. So make sure you guys do that, but on top of that even, make sure that you guys are really tailoring each cover letter to those specific jobs. You wanna make sure that you're talking to that company specifically and they know that you created this cover letter that really speaks directly to them. Those two tips right there are extremely important. Don't just go through and apply for every single job that you can find using the same exact resume and the same exact cover letter because it's not going to help you. Last but not least, clean up your social media, people. It's 2019 and employers are looking at this stuff. They're looking to see if you have a Twitter. They're looking to see if you have Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. They're observing what it is that you are doing in your free time and seeing what type of person you really are. So if you're sharing all of your pictures when you're doing a keg stand when you were back in college, I'd probably remove those 
just because. If you guys are sharing really sketchy things on social media, I would definitely go back through and delete some of those things that could be observed as, you know, PC. Now you just heard a few tips from me on what you can do to get your foot in the door in 2019. The best advice that I can give for you guys is to make sure that you're labbing every day. Hashtag lab every day. Make sure that you guys are utilizing any tool and skill that you have as often as you can. Building a virtual environment at home because that is relevant information that you can share on a resume and during an interview. If you guys are lacking certifications, definitely try to do what you can to get a certification. At the very least, go out and try to find something that really matches exactly what it is that you wanna be doing and see if you can study for that and nail that exam down. If you have a college degree and you think you're gonna get your foot in the door as a network engineer, I'm sorry to say it's probably not going to happen. So make sure you set your sights at something that is reasonable. An entry level role, again, isn't something that is permanent. It's something that's going to give you the foundational skills of how an enterprise environment works and employers are looking for those types of experiences. So go get an entry level role and start your career because it's going to be a very long, lucrative and amazing career once you get your foot in the door. Never go into an entry level role thinking that you're gonna be in that position forever because you're not. Use that entry level role as an experience and as a stepping stone to really take off in your career. And again, just to cover up one of the things that I talked about earlier in this video, your soft skills and communication skills will take you very far in this field. If you have no experience, no degree, and no certification, and you wanna get into IT, just having amazing soft skills and communication skills can actually get you an entry-level role, and that's amazing. There's many people who have done it, myself included. Dakota from IT Career Skills YouTube channel, check out his link in the description. He's done it as well. All it takes is being able to talk to people, communicate with people, show empathy, show that you're willing to learn and people will work with you because they want that type of attitude in their environment. So again, if you guys are looking to build your skills and you guys are looking for the perfect resource that can help teach you everything that you need to know as far as certification goes, make sure you check out the link in the description below for Pluralsight where you can get a free trial. Full disclaimer, that is an affiliate link. If you click on it and you do sign up, I will get some type of money. It's not an awful lot, but it's still a great resource and there's plenty of people out there who can tell you that Pluralsight provides an amazing value for what they offer over there. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. If you have any other comments, questions, or concerns, make sure you hit me up in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys. I do this all for you, trying to help you achieve success and be a better person. As always, take it easy.